Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Monday, it's August 13th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And interesting day. We had a big trend up, then a big trend down, and we really closed. Um, and we kind of just swung around there. We, we really closed down slightly. We closed around 28.26, where we closed... Um, we closed about, well, I'd say we closed down at about 10 points or so, so it's bigger than I thought it was. But, uh, you know, this is, in the big picture, we had a high and a low. We really traded within that the whole day. I wouldn't really call that a range day because the trend is about 20 points up and a little bit more than 20 back down. And then we took about half that back, tested the lows again, and we're on the way of taking the rest of it, uh, probably taking – taking that back or heading back to where we were here to test that high basically is what I'm trying to get out there. But interesting day, um, really coming down was really interesting. We'll talk about that really going up. We had multiple trends and coming down. We didn't really have multiple trends, but what I thought was a two tiered channel ends up dropping down a lower. And then this, what looked like the midline turns out to be the a trend line almost so this could be this really might have been a spike in channel down so we'll talk about that when we get to it but it's kind of interesting and hopefully you found this but all i really did from that all the way down was just copy that original line and keep moving at an equal distance and i got you in the right ballpark but hopefully you recognize this line this what i thought was the midline Originally, that's just a trend line working all the way down there. So I believe it turned. This was a spike in channel, and this was the two-tiered channel. Uh, again, you could have found it off the original trend line up there, but uh, it's kind of a unique kind of day. You don't see that very often, and, and and really this time of year, it often the market picks up, and we've been saying, you know, maybe it's going to pick up. Well, maybe this is the start of. Uh, the fall season where the market picks up a little bit and we get a little more movement. So we'll have to see. Uh, it was a good day today. There was ample chance to make some money today. So hopefully you got your opportunity. But on the way up, there's a two-tiered channel here. And you can see, and this is what I always try to tell people. You know, people will talk about um, wedges and so forth. This looks like a wedge right here. But really, all a wedge is is where this channel is intersecting with this bigger channel and this bigger channel is taking precedence so what happens is you're stuck you can't get above this bigger channel line but you got a shorter term the lighter blue here um, it's holding until it finally doesn't hold anymore and so it makes it look like a wedge and um, so just keep that in mind same thing here really notice how we're working up it looks like we kind of go into a wedge right there but look what I You've got a trend line right here. It's very, I mean, that's as clear as day and night right there, that trend line. If you can't find that trend line, you got a lot of work to do. Uh, but then I drew this line across the top. And you can see that line is holding, and it makes it look like a wedge again. So just keep that in mind. That's, uh, you know, I don't believe there's really such thing as a wedge pattern. It's just caused by intersecting, um, inter intersecting channels. And the only reason I say, you know, you could still call that a wedge, you know, it's it's semantics of what you call it. But the reason I say I don't really believe in wedges is what I'm getting at there is, uh, you know, you don't want to play the way, you know, you read about these rules about how to play a wedge and how you should, uh, you know, how you should play the breakouts or whatever. Just forget all that and play and just stay with the channels and play the channel so you know this trend line is working but you know this channel is taking precedence up here and so eventually we're going to turn around and probably go to the other side at a very minimum and that's exactly what happened once people figured out where we're going lower and it notice it gets a little support right here and it really turns into a trap and it traps some people but you wouldn't have wanted to go long here yet just simply because you got this trend line working down and you don't even have a close outside of it yet. Notice when you finally get a close outside, you move to a new low and it tries to bounce and it bounces right off that, what I thought was the midline at the time. And that's the second entry short. But we'll talk about all that when we get there. Let's talk about the trades. And um, there's still not a lot of trades today, but there's a lot of good movement. 
and there's a few runners here and there and so it, overall it was a pretty good trading day but as you can see it, we started out trending down early on and then we started trending up right here and you can clearly see this there's your first two swings on that trend line that came this was easy to get by seven o'clock you should have had this trend line because you can see those first couple of swings it gets confirmed right here if I'd have been trading I may have taken that it's a little bit of course that's that's you know it's early so I wasn't here yet but that's a little bit you know there's a little bit of concern because of all that uh, resistance across there but that's a nice con confirmation of that trend line but guess what we make another move up pull back first entry pull back second entry there's your second entry long nice bullish bar right off the trend line pretty much close enough to be off the EMA and enough room there if you're just using the closes it's a little tight but in this case there's so many stems up there and this is also congestion and that's like a little failed break I don't have that on there but because it's basically just a second entry long and an uptrend but you can see there's there's a little congestion area here notice there's one two three four five bars stacked up that's basically a doji that's close and you got the big stems and it kind of drops and fails and gives you a nice reversal so that's a good place to get in and then notice what happens you get a first entry short a second entry short it's also counting off the high pull back first entry pull back second entry so that's a second entry long you really as soon as this bar broke above the red bar since it's a failed second entry uh, short I wouldn't have any problem with a buy stop right there uh, however you could have waited on this one let it break above maybe drop a limit order a tick or so back just to make sure you got enough room to get out and it takes off but that's again that's a second entry right off the trend line it's a little pull back to test this breakout area you can see that right there it just pulls back and tests that area um, and then takes off and it's right off the trend line that, that key that's a key entry point that's proven over and over uh, I'm probably gonna take that trade every time as long as you got enough room to get out you need to be a little careful and you see it struggle a little bit to get on through there and then it pushed on up this one's really tempting but I'm just gonna tell you um, there's been no break of that trend line and it's still holding so all for all you know it's gonna tick back and then push higher again and notice how it gapped over that line right there it closed on its low and then opened on its uh, very high and it never filled that it just drops on down that tells you you probably got that trend line in the right place it's amazing how often I see that and it usually confirms your trend line um, I'm not 100% sure why it does that. I got some theories, but um, anyway, you'll see that a lot. That'll help you a lot of times determine if you got your trend line in the right place. But that's the first break, and we get a higher low here, and it pulls back, and, it, and I would draw this trend line off those first couple of swings. We don't quite get back there yet, but generally when you get a break, especially on a trend that strong, you're probably going to get two legs up, and so there's another reason I like this one is because this is a new swing low it's lower than that one and you got one leg up a correction and basically another leg up and so it's two legs up and it fails so that's you could treat that like a failed second entry short and it takes a little while but it works out it comes back to the trend line here but now you got too much congestion there and I'm not gonna go long on that break or this break right there and it just kind of keeps chopping up but when you start to see one thing you got to remember is that when you start to see a lot of little bars like this uh, generally that's a strong trend but it was very clear if you took this trend line and drug it up here it was pretty clear originally I had it a little bit lower like so and you see it still fits there so maybe there was an overshoot but I ended up moving it up just a little but either way you could see it bouncing even if you didn't have that line when it started bouncing here you should have drawn a line like so and you can see it bouncing off that trend line and so you don't you got to be real careful getting long up there just be real you know real careful about that and then um, there's a failed second entry long here notice the new high pull back first entry pull back second entry it fails 
but it doesn't break lower till here. I probably would not take that failed second entry short on that little break lower because it's it looks a lot like congestion and it's right into that uh, trend line. But when it pulls under and goes up and makes a double test of that level across there um, and makes that one more jog higher and fails again and kind of confirms that trend line right there. I like it then. Um, I think you're okay to, to enter it there because you, it's more than time that we were probably going to have a little break. Plus, if you go back and look at this brown channel here, you've got a break and you got more than a couple of legs up. So we're probably going to turn down and head at least to the midline, but maybe all the way down here. And it just, you know, those high gaps over that midline shoot straight down. Uh, that's a good sign that that midline's in the right place. And so we're probably headed down to here at that point. But this turns out to be a really good trade. If you had a better signal bar right here off that key entry point, I wouldn't be afraid to enter there, but mine's more of a doji neutral type bar. It's, it's actually more bullish than it is negative. It's, it's really almost kind of a neutral bar, but it's got a little bit of a bullish body there, maybe a tick or so. Uh, it's not a good entry bar on my chart. Uh, I'm not going to take that one. But if you had a better signal bar, you may take that one. And of course, it drops on down. And now we've been away from the EMA a little bit. Um, I'm probably not going to take this one. This one broke higher and turned and went lower. Um, but we've been away from the EMA. We're probably headed to here. So, and it does fit with uh, the midline. So, well, of course, you may not have had that midline yet. Um, you might have just probably had been playing this up here, and it looks like an overshoot, but it still comes back and tests it. So either way, you should have had it. Should have you should have been thinking maybe that's a midline. But the main thing is you got that. It gives you a chance to draw that shorter term trend line. This one right here, uh, and I end up just oops. I ended up just adjusting this a little bit later. You can see it fits a little better right there, and that gets you off the swing up here as well. And um, somehow I moved that one too. But anyway, you may take that one. Uh, I think it's a little aggressive, but it's such a nice setup. I probably wouldn't go short right. Well, you might even go short there because the odds are this thing is probably headed to here at the very minimum. And so you may take that one. Again, it's aggressive because you've been away from the EMA. Uh, this At that point, this looked like the key entry point, the main trend line coming down. Um, but then we kind of jog on down, and you don't want to get short into this. Even though it's continuing to go lower, um, you got a break outside. Now you got a new low, uh, and that's pretty fairly neutral. That one's fairly bu uh, bearish, but... Now you've got a break and at least a couple of swings down. I'm not going to risk it. Um, but then it comes back and it confirms this line again and it gives you a second entry short. And it's close enough to the EMA that it, you can probably call that a move back to the EMA. Uh, this thing is so steep. I'm just a, That would normally get you back to the EMA, but it's just so... Uh, we've been away from it so long and it's been so steep that we, you know, the prices have that, that it still doesn't quite touch it, but that's close enough in my opinion on a second entry short right off that, what looks like a midline. Uh, I'd probably, I'd probably take that one each time, especially because this is starting to look like one of those strong trends where you get a lot of little bars with the stems and dojis and it just keeps going lower. And you can see the bottom just drops out of that one. You don't know that it's going to take off like that, but you figure it's, you know, it's probably going to head down. And and the fact that it's overshooting here, you know, it starts to make you question what's maybe going on. And I may not quite have those lines in the right place. I believe I've got them. I didn't measure them, but they're just eyeballing. It looks like I've got a, my equal distance really close there. But you got plenty of room to get out before here. And before this two, this little double bottom, it doesn't matter. The bottom just falls out. But you want to make sure of that before you enter that down there. And, of course, you move on down. And also, I didn't show you this, but I'd measure this first leg. And then I would look for, once we started going lower, second leg. And you can see we got that almost to the tick. It looks like we went one tick further, maybe two. Um, but it comes back again here. 
Notice that new high is first entry, second entry. Again, it's right off the key entry point. Now you got the EMA involved. You got plenty of room. Uh, big bearish bar. I like going short there. And we got a pretty strong trend here now. There is a second entry short here again off that same place, but my bar is too bullish. You do have a fairly bearish bar right here, but that's not a smart move. So and notice it does come back, but again, it doesn't give you a very good signal bar. And you're pretty close to these lows, but when it comes back again and gives you a third touch and a failed second entry long and a big bearish bar, I'm going to take that one. Because we probably gonna, we may head back down to here. And that's when, it, by this time, you got to be thinking, hey, this is a spiking channel. So this thing spiked down and went into this two-tier channel. That's what I believe happened in the end. But early on, you know, you couldn't be sure about that. But by the time you're getting down here and you've turned out off that line, four different, four or five bars there, two bars here, a bar here, one, two, three, four bars here by that time, and it's holding steady. Every time it comes back, it rejects prices. Then you got the EMA. By the time you get down here, you got the EMA behind you as well. So that gives you some confluence there, a couple of different resistance areas. And by this time, it's obvious it's a strong trend, and you're looking for a measured move way down here. I like that trade because it probably traps some longs, people trying to pick bottoms. And this is why you don't start picking... You're better off just to get short. Even if you went with these horrible signal bars on because the trend's so strong, you're still going to be okay. And then we head back up. There is a first entry right here, but now you've had your measured move, and you do have this short-term trend line working up. So you got to be clear. I originally had it a little closer here, but I, but I adjusted it some. I originally had it up like that. It may still be like that. That's close. You know, it still works up through there. Um, actually it still looks pretty good right there, um, but you don't want to be going short right there into this trend line after a measured move. And we're probably overdue for a break should be coming soon anyway, but now you got two big measured legs down and I don't want to go long yet, but I'm not going to probably risk a short right there on a first entry. And this thing rallies out of here and they, they probably, all these shorts had to, jump out you know people that were getting short here and then uh, you do get a second entry here and you got to close outside the new high and plus it's almost a double it, it really is a double test of this level you tested it once you tested it twice so so really and truly you could argue for that it ought to at least be green but you could argue for it to almost be red i'm just going to make it green but you could argue for that to be red. Um, if, you, if you saw what I just showed you, the double test, uh, the fact that this short-term trend line, you get a break and a new high. But this trend line was pretty strong. And so I figure probably all we're going to do is get a correction here for now. But it could turn back down. So that, I mean, this is worth, I mean, if you want to, you know, that's where sometimes you catch your big moves because we might have moved, turned down here and got another big leg equal to this whole thing. Didn't happen that way, but being that far away from the EMA and the fact that this little short-term trend line's played out, it's something to consider. But generally, you want to wait on that lower high, but we're still a long way. I mean, that's the first. Here, here's something else to think about, too. Notice how we've been below that EMA all the way down. That is the first break and close above that EMA. In most cases, it's going to come back and at least test that EMA. So if you're way away like that, you might risk it. So another reason to make it at least green. Um, I, I didn't make it red because it's, you really generally would wait on a lower high, but you don't get that till down here and it doesn't even break lower below that. And that's right back into the trend line. So you really don't, um, <clears throat> you really should wait on that lower high so that's the reason i'll make it green but there's some there's some compelling reasons to like that again notice that high we tested it once we tested it twice notice that's the first break of either of these two trend lines depending on if it's a spiking channel that's the first break if it's this turns out to be the trend line and there's really two different tiers in there and these are just a little equal distance it's still the first break 
But notice it did come back after two, two legs up. Notice there's your first leg. And from there, you're looking for a measure move. We didn't quite get it, and then it sails off trying to make a new low again. We still never made one, but it tried. And that's to be, you know, that's what you would expect on a trend that strong. You're generally going to retest that low, even if you got an overshoot, which I don't really think we got an overshoot here. Um, I still think this was a spike in channel. And if you can't see that, just. Uh, let me just show you that real quick. Take that away and notice we spiked down and then we went into this channel. And there's your upper trend line, a midline, and your lower trend line. This is probably a little bit more like so. So that's how I was seeing it. But you couldn't ignore this trend line either. And that's how I originally found all these lines was off this original trend line. So just keep that in mind, but um, yeah, you come down, you get a close outside, you bounce right off the EMA. Um, it's really a first entry long, but notice this, you move up, you get a first entry and you get a second entry. Uh, I wouldn't really call that a failed second entry short, but it's a couple of legs up and a bounce right off the EMA and right off that key entry point. That's what I really like about it. You got to close outside this little short term trend line, a new low. And so I like that one. I would have liked this one better if the bar is just too neutral and it's so close to that high after you've already pushed, pushed up once and come back. But if that would have been a little better signal bar, I probably would enter there. So if you had a little better center, uh, signal bar than what I had, I wouldn't be afraid to enter there. And notice too that you get a failed second entry short right here. Um, <clears throat> being that far away from the EMA on this little rally here, I probably wouldn't take that. But you could argue for that. And when it broke higher here, you would have got your scalp before it turned back down again. So it's something to think about. But I, this late in the day with all that stacked up and stems on both sides I'm probably I wouldn't enter there and I didn't mark it it's just I don't have the you can see the lower line I don't have the upper one on there but it's congestion you can see we came back and got back in it before we headed lower again and I didn't see anything else that I really liked you don't want to go short there that's not a very good signal bar uh, even though you're away from the MA so um, but that's what I saw today and it was an interesting day this was really kind of interesting here with the four lines, a couple of different ways to look at it. Um, both of them really, you know, either way you looked at that, if this was the trend line, they all get you to the same place really. But if it really helped if you saw this spike down and then this trend line right across here, I mean, that's acting like a trend line. That's not really acting like a midline. So a midline will turn prices, but not as consistently and usually not that long for that long a period of time. So I still believe this is a trend line coming down through here. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Not much else we can say about today, but um, good trading day. Hopefully you had a good trading day. And this is where a lot of people get confused when it suddenly turns and goes down. But once you get a confirmed trend working in the other direction, go with it. Don't, don't fight it. Don't, don't be scared of it. If you get that confirmed trend line, Go with what you got. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.